Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 16, brought to you by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. We're back, this is Knowledge 16. This is theCUBE. theCUBE goes out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. Check out siliconangle.com for all the news and all the summaries of the event and all the interviews that we've done today. Here, obviously, we're at SAP Sapphire as well this week. Reggie Jackson, we had an event at MIT. So three events this week for theCUBE, pretty amazing. Jonathan Sparks is here. He's the Director of Product Management at ServiceNow. Jonathan, thanks for coming on. Coming My off pleasure. the keynote. Big high today, big yep. audience. How do you feel? Uh, I'm absolutely pooped right now. <laughs> but <laughs> I try to bring in as much as I can. A lot it's, goes into it. I think, you know, you, you, we, we go to these events and we see the effort that goes in. It's got to be the closest. It's not even close, I know, but it's got to be the closest to giving birth that a man can experience. But, <laughs> but anyway, congratulations. It was Thank looks you. like you had fun up there today. It seemed like the audience was really into it. Yep. Got some authentic claps. They weren't golf claps. They were hoots. Yeah. That's got to make you feel yeah. good. Uh, you know, it's funny being up there because um, I definitely said things that weren't actually jokes, uh, but people laughed anyways, which I thought was kind of interesting. Really? Like what? Yeah, it worked out. Well, <laughs> the, the develop with your friends thing, that wasn't a joke. <laughs> I was just really saying, no, now you can actually develop with your friends because we're on ECMA 5, but whatever. Yeah, yeah that out. got a good chuckle, <laughs> right. So the developer community is it's exploded here. Absolutely. Um, did, did you, were you able to predict that? I mean, did anybody f foresee that? No, I mean, so we always knew that we had a big community, but then ne we never really had a spot, right? Last year we did the dev program and we went live with that. And, you know, we haven't actually done a ton of marketing around it. It just has organically grown and it's, it's, it's almost, it's approaching 40,000 people on the community right now. And it's not just people who are registered, they're really active. Um, at any given time, there's something like 10,000 active people on that community who are, who are helping each other out, they're building things. Um, it's, it's pretty vibrant, it's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, Jeff and I were talking earlier in theCUBE, I mean, companies covet developers. They'll you know, crawl through glass to get developers to come Absolutely. to an event within an event. You guys kind of said, ah, oh, yeah, let's do a little side event, and it gets sold out, and the uh, yeah. line up. I mean, we have a, I don't know, we, it seems like customers and developers sort of bring a different kind of passion uh, when they're working with ServiceNow. Um, and I, you know, I, when I think about why that is, we don't spend a lot of time um, marketing or promising things. I think we're very authentic and we're very real about what we're not good at, what we are good at. Um, and it sort of attracts a different kind of person that I think just there's way more passion there. So, um, you know, we're surprised when it happens, but that's just kind of, who we, who we end up attracting anyways. So what's the conversation like in the developer community and how does it differ than what one might expect from a, I don't know if there's anything traditional about <laughs> developers, but you know what I mean. Uh, I mean, they're talking about Scrum and Agile and stand-up, 15-minute stand-ups and new processes and I'm sure there's some of that going on, but how is the conversation different than what you might expect at a developer event? I don't know if I have a good answer to that one. Um, it's, I watch it and a lot of it is is just people helping other people out. Um, and, and that's, I think, a, similar to a lot of developer yeah. communities as well. Very collaborative, you're right. Yeah, it's very collaborative. Um, and, it, but they're, they seem to be very passionate around uh, the service now topic when they're, when they're talking about it. Um, the thing that I talked about actually, the, Ec the whole ECMA thing, um, I talked about that because it was actually something that I saw being brought up in the community. And um, I thought it was kind of funny because to me it's it's sort of like a low level thing, um, but people were like talking, oh hey, did you hear that ServiceNow is actually going up to ECMA five, right? So it, it it's that kind of surprised me, but um, that's just one of the things that I saw happening on there, and ended up people actually it was kind of a big deal to them, but so it was kind of neat. You don't hear in the in the messaging anyway, terms like platform as a service, PaaS, you know. Oh, um, kind of developer toolkit, the buzzword. That, that the the lingua franca of developers in this community just seems to be different. Certainly, the marketing is is different. I'm, I'm trying to get my finger on you know the so, pulse of, of yeah. So there's the kind of a, a couple different ways that we get developers here. Um, one of them is we take people who aren't developers 
and they actually become developers on ServiceNow because they start to get their hands on tools that are more approachable and they're started, sort of able to accomplish the things that normally you'd have to be a, develop, a developer, a traditional developer to accomplish. The other thing that I noticed is um, we're really good f uh, platform for somebody who's like a web developer, right? Um, Somebody, uh, Bretlin Fletcher from New York Stock Exchange did a session on this and I thought it was super, super interesting. He, what he does is he just hires web developers. And when you start to dissect why that works on ServiceNow, it's because those folks sort of spend a lot of time doing front-end development that's more about solving business problems, but traditionally are very beholden to sort of like the back-end engineer that sort of considers themselves to be a little bit more of like this elite status because I work on things on the, on the back-end. We, we make it so they don't have to deal with that, and then they can just go focus on the fun part, which is building great user experiences, solving problems for the business. So that's kind of a different crowd that we end up attracting. So taking IT admins, making them developers, taking web developers, breaking the chains from that kind of like low-level engineer that they're so dependent upon. That's, that's kind of where we see our sweet spot right now from a developer and, and perspective. And they're also becoming evangelists for other parts of the organization, right? Talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. Um, so, they, other parts of the organization, you mean um, other parts of the business with yes. the, the, where, where they work? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and especially on the admin side, because uh, uh, the IT folks, haven't really been in a position where they can be able to build and solve those kind of problems for the, for the business. And so once they get their hands on a tools like this, all of a sudden they're not getting bypassed because they can go to the business and say, I can build you something awesome. And it makes them so much more relevant. And it's just kind of changes their job from sort of reactionary to like driving value into the business, which is pretty cool. What kinds of things are developers asking you for at, at this event and others that you know, are interesting to you, that you're hearing sort of over and over again? Well, I mean, you saw, you saw us do the whole Twitter vote thing, right? When we asked them, hey, here's, here's three hashtags you can vote for. Clearly, UI development tools are, uh, are, are something that they're looking for, which is great because we have that service portal. Is that what came out of that? Because I had to leave before the end, and I couldn't get a connection on, and to watch it. So I, I, I saw the setup, but I missed the, the punchline. So, by the, so by, the, by the time, so we, the question we, we asked was, hey, should we focus on debug tools, testing tools, or UI development tools? Okay, uh, and we did Twitter votes, and then we put it up live. And by the time I walked to the back of the stage, there was something like 657 tweets that had come in as votes, and it was 60%, 65% of them, something like that, was, hey, we want UI development yeah. tools, right? <laughs> Which is great. Um, and what I told Fred right after that was, hey, did you see that result? Can you work harder, faster, please, on service <laughs> portal? <So. laughs> Clearly more, they want more that. More coffee for Fred. The reality is, you know, we're working on all that stuff, right? right. And it's all coming. And right. uh, so each, each of those was a hashtag, and you were just counting up the hashtags. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So a tweet. We we were just we were just uh, integrating in with Twitter, right? So anytime a tweet came out, one of those hashtags, we just counted it as a vote for that thing. Yeah. All right. How about data? What kind of data do developers want? You know, John Furrier talks about all the time: data is the new development kit. Are you hearing a lot of demand for certain types of data? What type of data do developers want to get their their hands on? Um, I don't know, man. I get, I get more data requests from the, the people who have the business problem. And when they think about data, it's more in the realm of um, connecting all my data together. Uh, and so maybe, maybe that's what, the, what, what developers are looking for. But it's how do I get enough data to the point where I get visibility across all these things that are taking place? And then also, um, how do I make it so that I can be predictive in what's going to take place, which it turns out you need a lot of data to actually get really intelligent uh, mm -hmm. in, in that way. And so that's, those are kind of the two areas where I see it. And then you announced uh, at the keynote today the uh, uh, GitHub integration. Or, and, and, and an integration with Git. An integration with Git. And, yes. and so, and I was like, hmm, interesting. And it was like a collective finally from the audience. So talk about that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Our, our, our customers, our developer community, they're very vocal about what they want. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, like, I think last knowledge, I was in a, the pack 
which is the Product Advisory Council, um, and they just blew me up with with requests for that. So it's not like you know we can take credit for being. Oh my God, it was such a great idea, <laughs> wasn't it? it? Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I pretty much just got yelled at and said, "Okay, yeah. fine." <laughs> <laughs> okay, but. But do you talk about the integration because you had made a point, and I didn't catch the nuance, but you had made a point it's more than just some lightweight integration. It's yeah, so all the things that you, that you want to be able to do. So uh, other platforms do this, right? They say, okay, you can use Git to store your, your application files. But then to actually manage all of that stuff, so to go and commit changes that you're working on or to go um, you know, create a branch in a, in a source repo, do all that stuff, you're actually going to some external tool. Um, and depending on the external tool, there's sort of different vernacular that they use for accomplishing what ultimately are the same things. And it kind of, they, they push that out. What we did is we said, we're going to build an interface that allows you to just do all of that within ServiceNow. And we'll abstract away some of the things that you might not necessarily care about and then just make it so it's a really easy experience and it's really simple to use that Git repo as you're doing development on ServiceNow. I see, okay, so you're basically as opposed to uh, a, a, a customer as opposed to uh, uh, leveraging a bunch of bespoke tooling, you're consolidating all that and allowing them to, to manage that? Ultimately, or? we don't have, want them to have to go outside of ServiceNow to manage yeah, any of that do stuff. Anything, right? <laughs> Keep them inside. Love it. <laughs> well, they don't want to either because it interrupts work. No, absolutely. Right where, I, right stop, where start, I'm doing stop, my start. building. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. All right, Jonathan, and thanks for coming on theCUBE, being my as pleasure. exhausted as you are, but I'll give you the last word. <laughs> Knowledge 16, what's the bumper sticker pulling away from the Mandalay Bay Hotel? What's your... Uh, well, I would have to steal, I would have to steal a, a, a Balmer thing, right? Developers, 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 <laughs> developers. <laughs> That's, That's a good one. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, thanks Long very much. Appreciate sticker. your time. <laughs> okay. Thanks, All right, guys. keep right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this word. This is theCUBE. We're live from Knowledge 16. This is